Alright, in the last video we made it so that the ships will actually be spawned through a script on the something node. So let's go actually into our project settings really quick and we're going to be messing with things a little bit more inside of here to make it so that the video is displaying in a place that makes more sense for this game. So right, you know what, let's just go full blown 1920 by 1080. There we go. Boom, maximum resolution. Let's see what happens here. There we go, now we're zoomed way out. Okay. And now we can zoom in on the 2D camera. It'll actually make a lot more sense to zoom in on the 2D camera to like 0.5 and 0.5. And the last bit of housekeeping that we need to do for our game in order to make it a little bit more fun here. Because what we're doing is we're just making it so that we can get hit by an overwhelming number of enemies. And that's kind of what we have to end up dealing with. So in order to make it so that we actually have the tool set to deal with that, Let's do two things. One, let's make it so that our bullets can travel a bit further. So we'll go over to the bullet scene that we've been using, which is actually bullet.tsen. We'll open that up. We'll go to the timer. And instead of having that be 0.7, let's actually let it go for like 1.2 seconds, quite a bit further. And then beyond that 1.2 second timer that we have on there, let's also make it so that the uh, player can move a bit faster, which is controlled by his script of speed. Let's double up his speed to like 200. Then let's try it out and see how we're dealing with the enemies at this point. Let's also make his bullets travel a bit faster to kind of deal with this now. Okay, so let's actually make it so that the bullets can actually travel faster as well. So let's go back to the bullet scene real quick. Let's go over to the speed and let's actually make that equivalent to 500 instead. Because right now I'm kind of like outrunning my bullets, which is not a good sign. There we go. That makes more sense. Now let's actually get to the point of this tutorial, making an ending to this. So right now we have a global.gd. If you don't remember that, you just simply go over to your RES folder and it's actually just right here inside the main folder right here because we haven't made like a scripts folder yet. And what we want to do is we want to have a var goal score. Let's make it so it's a really simple thing like 20 right now, right? Then we're going to make var score equivalent to goal score. So we're going to actually count down from the number of units that need to be destroyed here from the goal. And we're going to make a function that kind of does this for us that can be run by other scripts. Right? And we're going to make it enemy kilt will be the name of the script, or name of the function, at least. We'll put this little colon here at the end here. And we'll simply say score minus equals one, which is equivalent to saying score equals score minus one. Exactly the same thing, said twice. And what we'll do with this is if the score is less than or equal to zero, then you put a colon and you write print, you win. Right? And we'll always print the score when it comes off, just so that we can keep track, right? Now that we have that put into our global.gd, we actually need to run this enemy kilt in order to do this. And we're going to go into our enemy scene in order to pull that off. It's actually, I think it's happening inside the bullet right now, right? Yeah, it's actually our bullet that's doing it. So let's actually go into our bullet. .tsen, and you see that when it's going into an enemy, it's freeing up his body and destroying it. So we're also going to want to go global dot enemy kilt. And that will start keeping track of that score for us as well. So let's go ahead and push the play button, see what happens. Destroy one, two. Okay, so I did win, luckily. All right. Okay, so I killed over 20 of them. So you can see down here in the bottom that I was able to win the game by going through that. So we've gotten to the point now that we can make it so that we can have a winning condition, so to speak. So now that we've put in a win condition, we've got the graphics so they work, we make the game a little bit more balanced. I think that we've gotten to the point now where we can actually start to make some sound effects, put some juice into this game, and we want to display the score and how many enemies left, and maybe even do a second board that's more difficult or something. And then I think we're going to be finished with this. Yeah. Feels a little weird. That was pretty quick. <laughs> Alright, so that's the good part about Godot, I guess. It's pretty quick to build up something. And, I mean, I did it pretty messy because I'm still learning it myself. But I hope that it worked out as a pretty good tutorial for you. We will continue this next time. We'll make a video about some sound effects and get some sounds inside of here. It'll be a lot of fun, guys. Anyways, I hope that you really liked it, that you had a good time. Have a great day, guys. Bye.